Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel and back with a what's going on in the shop. So, we got some pretty crazy cars going on. Also, don't forget to check out the events tab on the L1 Training website. Got some hands-on programming classes coming up. So, we have nothing but crazy headaches going on at the shop. I am in a uh, 2012 Land Rover. Surprise, surprise, Land Rover. This car's got uh, this going on here. Any of you that are familiar with uh, Land Rover products know that the blinky like light and stuck Range Rover message on the dash means we have an open in the most bus. The problem is, is this car came to us with... The screen doesn't display anything. It was blank, no power, no lights, no nothing to it. Customer purchased this 2012 um, L322 chassis. It's a, just a 12 Land Rover Range Rover. And the radio didn't work. Said so He brought it to us and said, please make the radio work. Okay, we can do that. We found that the integrated head unit, which is uh, right down there, was faulty in a way that it wasn't grounding the relay to power the screen. Uh, we confirmed that with Powers Grounds comms. It is on the most bus also. Uh, we called for a replacement IHU uh, integrated head unit, which in the STD software, it is either called a front entertainment module or a front audio control module. I think it's front audio control module. I'm not sure. I've been making Zach one do all this stuff so he can learn more and more of the uh, Euro stuff. So he gets to deal with that headache. You're welcome, Zach. Um, long story short, or than what I, you know, I could go on. 20 minutes for this. We'll try to keep the video short. Uh, we got the the screen on, and that's where we're at. So then we go, all right, we bust open SDD, get the topology map going, find the entire most buses down, which is normal, because if there's one device on the most bus that is open, then, well, the whole most bus is down and open. No combinating modules. So we go back to the back where all of the most bus components are, because, well, let's be honest. It's a fishbowl back here. It collects water, right? So let me switch over to where we can see that. And basically we're dealing with the telephone module was our open in the most bus. So using uh, a jumper, which currently we have something else on the jumper. Uh, or we have another jumper somewhere. There we go. So using a single most bus jumper, I'll put a link in the description. You can buy these on Amazon. We've got a bunch of them laying around. Uh, we keep a couple sets because you never know when you're going to need them. They come with a male and a female side. This is the one that's been open. We're missing the other side. Anyways, you pull out the most bus, which is a fiber optic cable on this particular vehicle. And it's media oriented something trans. I don't remember what most bus stands for. Anyways, telephone modules are common failure items. You unplug the most bus and plug in the jumper. See, see the most bus flashing. If the telephone module was open, I'm trying to do this one handed, I apologize we could typically plug it in like that and that bypass the most the this particular module right it instead of being an open circuit on the most bus where the the uh, communication goes in but doesn't come out this loops that and basically bypass that module so bypass telephone module then the radio comes on surprise surprise um but no sound and the radio there's no presets there's no anything these are common for um, amplifier failure, so we have to check powers, grounds, communications, most bust, and uh, speaker output control. But the radio's acting funny. And we had programmed it, or Zach did. So we actually go through and, and do quite a bit of research on how, where does all the data on this radio screen come from. It actually comes from the integrated head unit that we replaced. Um, so we called reluctantly for a warranty of that brand new from uh, Land Rover. We were correct. Put the unit in, turn the car on, and we replaced the telephone module, uh, programmed that as well, and we got uh, static on the radio. Cool. Pull the car around to this side, thing's dead as a doornail, come down to finding the amplifier is the open in the most bus, because I had to open again. So right now, a uh, amplifier is on order, and we get to play that game. So, uh, a lot of water over there, the parking aid module that's also here, Parking aid modules also no com, 
And the IBOC tuner, I believe, is calm, but it's uh, rusty where it has water damage. So that's where we're at with the Land Rover. Um, God, don't you just love Land Rovers? I actually really like these cars, but I hate the fact that they cost $9,000 to fix every time you need to fix one. Also got 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's got some governor pressure circuit faults. Um, start the car up and run it. And then after 30 seconds or so, the governor pressure starts to increase all the way up to its max five volt and sets a code for circuit high. Um, this has a some kind of fault either um, commanding the governor pressure solenoid to shut off and um, go full governor pressure or it has an internal valve body issue causing actual governor pressure to increase that high. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of time with this one yet. It's here from a training shop. We have the beautiful Nissan Murano. Spoke with someone at Nissan today. I don't know if I'm allowed to name them, so I'm not going to. Um, this is this came to us. You guys have seen it in a couple of videos. All new modules. Currently, we have a issue between key, antenna, and body control module. Um, so we're dealing with that. And then we've got this beautiful 2009 Ford Escape Hybrid you guys saw maybe in one of the videos. I don't remember if it was here or not in the last video or so. Um, we bought this. It needed a hybrid battery. So we bought this. And the lights are out over here, so I can't... I don't know how... It won't be very clear. It's kind of a mess over here. We bought this, and we bought two additional hybrid batteries from the guy because he has three of these things. Uh, they're all 09s, so none of them have the jump start button. And we cannibalized all the batteries and we think we've got it fixed. Either way, it's gonna be a car we use. And then, uh, that's one of our vans. I'm gonna go back this direction because I don't think I can show what company this is, but we've got um, a couple of these Rogues here. Um, they are uh, all windshield calibrations. This company has to put windshields in 10 either 2020 or 2021 Nissan Rogues. So we're working with that now, which is kind of why we've just got the VI3 consult device laying out. Uh, apparently the hotel's out also. And I think we already put all the, this is the Nissan, disastrous Nissan that we're working on currently. Um, I guess all the laptops got put up that consult out. But yeah, so we've been just rolling through those Rogues. And then outside, I don't know if you guys want to follow me outside or not. Oh, just got back from Vision. We got a little more, a couple more badges for all of our technicians and everyone to put up. We've got that Jeep Renegade uh, that has a ABS fault. We've got that Malibu that has some kind of fault. That blue Honda is a wiring issue. That Sprinter was dropped off with, I don't know what's wrong. And then you can't really quite see it. Uh, behind, next to the Sprinter, is a white Malibu with a P1101, but that is the Malibu that came in with the DC-DC converter faults, um, a fault with the active grill shutter. It's a car lot car, came from auction, so crazy, right? Anyways, what else is going on? Ah, I have to thank Derek over at Think Car and Kip with hooked me up with the Think Car um, remote expert device. That's the remote programming wall, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Anyways, uh, testing that system now, going to be releasing, I'm sure it's stable because they're, they've partnered with uh, Launch, who is the partner or the parent company of the software for Think Car, uh, has partnered with Repairify, which is the company that owns Aztec. And Aztec does remote programming for all kinds of collision centers all across the country. Launch has partnered with them for the remote expert stuff. So I think the launch, uh, rem I keep calling it remote expert. That's auto. Uh, the remote assistance or whatever they want to call it, um, launch is going to be partnering with them on their server. So I think the launch system is going to be pretty robust, just like the Autel remote expert. And probably as stable as the iScan SOD. So we'll see. But you should see uh, adding that to the website on the programming website. But this video isn't about remote programming. It's just about what's going on. So thanks, guys, for hanging out. It's been entirely too long on this video. I lost half you guys probably. But again, shop's a disaster. But, you know, it's a Monday. What can you do? We're back from vision. So uh, have fun. Stay dirty. Don't 
do anything I wouldn't do, all the other things I can steal from other YouTubers that they say. Uh, don't forget to comment down below what you want to see in a video, and if you have any questions about tools, equipment, training, whatever, uh, trying to figure out what color you should dye your dog's hair, don't do that. Um, ch send them to techquestions at l1training.com. I'll put that right here because the magic of editing, and we'll see you guys next time.